We're very much part of what's called the Artemis Exploration Program, and we're building a small space station that's going to orbit the moon to facilitate lunar landings, but not just for a one-off. You know, we're looking at building lunar research bases where crews will potentially spend up to six months, maybe a year, on the surface of the moon. Probably two US crew members, a man and a woman, will probably be the first two uh, US crew members to return there um, since 1972. And then after that, we'll have the ability for European astronauts to be involved. Uh, but certainly by the end of the decade, we should have seen, you know, probably several missions to the surface of the moon. I would never say never, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 40, uh, 48 years old now, so we won't fly as astronauts beyond 63. So I could be right on the cusp, but hopefully, certainly uh, a lunar mission is within my career time frame. If going into space is, is kind of on one level, going out the hatch in a spacesuit is another order of magnitude altogether. Um, and uh, on the one hand, you're very aware you're putting yourself in harm's way. I mean, there's nothing we do that carries greater risk than a spacewalk. Uh, but also nothing that we do that carries greater exhilaration as well. Um, and I, I kind of approach spacewalking as if I was flying a sortie. The, your space suit is like a small space station. It's keeping you alive, all the systems, um, you know, all the things you need to learn about. Yeah, I really hope that we have a strong showing from the MOD in terms of our, you know, this next selection of astronauts, which is uh, hugely exciting. And, um, you know, this is really the, the next generation of astronauts that's going to see us go to the moon. So for the Europe, that's our first Europeans on the moon, of course, uh, and possibly, you know, in their career time, go on to Mars. and we have strategic assets in space that are part of our critical national infrastructure and so we need to be able to protect them. But we also need to be able to look after that environment as well. Um, and space needs to be regulated, it needs to be managed. We need to look at the amount of space debris that we're creating. I mean, we do not want to ruin the space environment for generations to come. So um, I think it's only right that actually we position ourselves where we've got the right credit amount of credibility um, and we've got government backing in order to have a large voice, large enough voice in an international stage to be able to help, you know, forge the decisions that need to be taken for the future. Oh, I'm immensely proud to accept that. It's a huge honour. Uh, um, you know, the Army Air Corps has been such a large part of my life. So this is, has come full circle to be able to give something back, really, and, and hopefully help to inspire the pilots of the future. Living in space is, is incredible. Um, you've got that liberating feeling of, of floating around the space station, the incredible view when you look outside the window. But it's, there's a sense of detachment from the planet as well, this sense of isolation that allows you to reflect and you know, look back on your home planet and literally uh, be, be, be disassociated from it, which is quite surreal and quite unique. This is going to be, uh, you know, an exciting evening of fun and adventure. It, yes, it's talking about my my journey to space, but we're going wider than that. We're talking about space exploration as a whole, um, and we're looking at uh, things that astronauts do in terms of their selection and their training, their preparation for a mission to space. So there's going to be a whole plethora of, of different um, exciting things to talk about. So I'm really looking forward to that tour starting.